Welcome to my kitchen again. It's Diane here. All right, so the first part of the pie dough, I taught you how to make it. Now I'm going to show you what to do with it. After wrapping these discs up, and they've been in the night, they've been in the refrigerator overnight. Now they're stone cold. I just pulled them out. So, what we're going to do, since they're so cold, I'm going to roll them to the sizes to fill these 10 inch pie tins. And the way to do it when they're stone cold, because you want to work with this really cold, and if you work with it fast enough, you're able to um, fill them and bake them right away. Otherwise, you need to refrigerate them so that the fat doesn't melt out of this, out of the um, pie dough. So anyway, I have just a little bit of a light coat of flour on the dough itself and a little sprinkling over a marble. Uh, the marble is really a wonderful thing. Okay. I'll go back to that in a minute. But anyway, to start this, since it's so cold and there's so much butter in it, here's what you do. You want to beat this out a little bit. Quarter turn it a couple times, like three or four turns, maybe more. And what this does is it breaks down the butter a little bit so it rolls so let's give it a try now that's a technique that's used a lot in making puff pastry that also has a lot of butter in it yeah now it's rolling nicely so you want to stand over it now what I'm doing is I'm taking the pin I love my little French tapered rolling pin works really well feels good in the hand too and rolling it from the center out quarter turning the disc every time I roll out and keeping a little light coat of dough or of flour on the marble. Now the reason I like this marble so nice is because it helps keep the dough colder and having done this so many times on Formica, Corian, Stainless, whatever, marble is clearly my favorite for rolling any kind of a dough you don't need a real big piece of it. My sister was kind enough to pick me this piece up. I don't know what it was originally, but it's got some legs on it. So I put some, a towel underneath it. And it works absolutely perfect for rolling dough. And so what you're getting, and what I'm doing is rolling this, I like to roll it a little bit back to me. Roll it and roll it around in a circle keeping one end of it, your left hand, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to roll it towards me, and then it keeps a nice circle going, and also gets you a little fluted edge. Then what I do, in this pan that's a little flatter and not as sharp as this tart pan, I'm just going to flop this over my hand, and I am going to center it in the pan, and then fold it down, and lay it down in the pan. You might have to manipulate it slightly, but lay it down in the pan and make sure you're not stretching it way across the bottom. But see how easy that was to do? Then what I'm going to do is what I found, now that this is fitted nicely, and I use my index finger to push it into the corner and so I am going to take a pair of scissors and just trim off the top. A lot of people will take the rolling pin and roll across the top. It's pretty much whatever you're comfortable with, but because this is such a rolled edge on this uh, tart pan, it's a non-stick. It's really a nice one. I love it. Save your scrap because this is good for the bottom of another tart. Anyway, then gently roll the edges back in and then after though that's rolled in to the inside then what you're going to do or what you can do is take the back of a knife and press into the dough going all the way around the pan 
and it'll make a pretty edge when you're um, after you've baked it sometimes it's not going to make a difference because it might shrink up a lot and I'm going to fill this that'll be the next stage filling these um, tins that actually these are going to end up to be quiches but um, that kind of works for a nice little fluted edge and press it back up against its side now the other pan I'll show you this again whoops whoops all right these are a little trickier French tart pans and the reason I say they're a little trickier is because the edges are really sharp so you have to handle that slightly different so again what I'm going to do is pound this out a little bit quarter turns just to get it to flatten out and then you'll know when you're able to roll it it's pretty obvious when you pound it and now it's starting to roll out really nice so again roll it from the center out or the center towards you if it starts to stick just lightly dust it with a tiny bit of flour you don't want too much flour into it but just to keep it from sticking and then what you're going to do and by rolling it either towards you or away from you at the edges this helps keep this in a nice circle and it's just easier then to place in the pan and you won't get all sorts of strange shapes going so anyway now because these edges are so sharp and by the way I have sprayed these really really well with fat in a can and what I've done is I've sprayed the inside of this, I've sprayed the sides, I've sprayed the top and the bottom of the pan because hey if you're making quiches that's all it, they leak out and that sometimes there's nothing you can do about it so now fold this in quarters and place this in your pan being careful that you don't want to tear this and then carefully unfold it again you know these edges are just so sharp they'll tear the pastry really easy then folding it into the center of the pan but not all the way use your index finger to push it gently against the side of the pan so that you have an edge that's not stretched real tight across the bottom and if for instance you know it might be a little bit shy there but I don't really want to stretch this to that side what I can do with this is take off a little piece which I'm doing with my thumb and then just pushing it into the edge but this because it's so sharp you can pretty much take off easily with your thumb or I suppose I could roll the edge of it too but you still have to trim it no matter what with your thumb but anyway so that's how to do a sharp edged uh, classic French uh, tart pan so again save your scraps up because you'll find if you do a couple of these that you'll end up with a sizable amount of dough left over and these are really nice I do like to flour a little bit to put it away form it into a disc but I do have one more to roll um, and these make the, a good bottom because they've been worked already once the dough will be a little more tough than this not that it's tough by any stretch but it has been worked so this will make the good a good bottom to any one of these pans so anyway that's how you start to roll out then because it's a little warm in here I am going to refrigerate this for a little bit or quicker yet put them into the freezer because the freezer will chill these up because they really need to be baked from stone cold if not frozen frozen works like a charm so I am going to roll out the rest of these and then I'll be back with another part on what I'm going to fill them with so I hope you enjoyed this I hope this helps with you making pies and hope to see you again hi Diane here all right I'm back with pie dough again so here's what we're gonna do these are the French tins and this is my little um, non-stick tin that I've already rolled the dough into and I'm going to show you gosh one of everybody's most favorite thing that I do again quiches 
You know, it's such a classic recipe and it's really pretty easy to do. After you have everything ready to go, sauteed, rehydrated, cooked, chopped, diced, sliced, whatever, then they go together really fast. And if you're doing slicing, dicing, chopping, add, do a little extra so you have it in the refrigerator. So what I like to do, now these tins are nice and cold, the dough is nice and cold, is I'll do one at a time. Um, I am going to do one because I have this in plastic bags only because I can get the air out of it and stores well. All right, so let's do a mushroom gruyere and porcini. I think this porcini is going to get a little truffle oil over the top when it comes out of the oven. So into the bottom of the tin because this helps seal the crust a little bit. I'm putting a little gruyere. It's really nice gruyere too, aged a couple years. It's wonderful stuff. Swiss, not American, not you know whatever. It's Swiss gruyere. It's really good. So into that, now I'm going to put some mushrooms that I've already sauteed. You could saute these with shallot if you wanted to and or garlic but I don't really do too much overpowering of um, garlic because now we're going to do the porcini. I'm going to scatter these in the middle and what I've done, these were dry porcini that I rehydrated with some boiling water over them and then after they sat for about 15 minutes and I let the liquid seep to the bottom so that if there's any sand on them that will go to the bottom of the pan. So anyway, porcini then they get sliced and or they get uh, chopped up and then the, the, uh, um, the liquid I reduce down really well and then turn it back in it. I reduce it till it's like a syrup but you do have to make sure that you don't pour any sand back into the pan before you reduce it. Okay, so we've got some porcini on there. And then we're going to put a little bit of chopped or green onion on the top, scallions, whatever you'd like to call it. And then I'm going to season this with a little bit of dried thyme, just a little, not a little lot, just a tiny bit, evenly over the top. <laughs> 